So today we're gonna learn about double fertilization. Double fertilization involves two megamets, which the first one we fertilize itself to form a diplet zygote, and the second one we fuse with pollen nuclei to form a triplet endosperm tissue. The generative nucleus undergoes mitosis in the pollen tube and produces two megamets, which are haploid. Both of the megamets enter the embryo cell for fertilization. When the megamet reaches the embryo cell, the pollen tube will penetrate the ovule to the micropyle. The tube nucleus will degenerate and both megamets enter the embryo cell. Next, one of the megamets will fertilize eight cells to produce a diplet zygote, while the second one will fuse with the two pollen nuclei to form triplet endosperm nucleus. Double fertilization for the survival of flowering plants. So, the fusion of one of the male gametes with the egg cell produces a zygote, which is genetic information is passed down from one generation to the next generation. Then, it can restore haploid condition in gametes with the formation of the diploid zygote. It's about the fusion of another male gamete with two pollen nuclei produced endosperm tissue. First, the tissue is used for the development of an embryo for the survival of plant species. Then, in unicorns such as legumes, mangoes, and mustard, the endosperm is fully utilized by the embryo to develop before the seed matures. But, in most monocots such as coconut, wheat, barley, and corn, only a part of the endosperm is utilized for the development of an embryo because some of them are stored in the cotyledon to be utilized during the germination of the seed. The endosperm tissue enables the embryo to survive in the seed for a long time if conditions are not favorable for germination to occur.